Thank you. 
Прийшли окупанти до нас в Україну, форма новенька, воєнні машини, та трохи поплавився їх інвентар. Байрактар. Байрактар. Російські танкісти сховались в кущі, щоб лаптю посорбати довбані щі, та трохи у щах перегрівся навар. Байрактар. Байрактар Зі сходу припхались до нас барани Для восстановлення великої страни Найкращий пастух баранячий хотар Байрактар Байрактар Їх доводи всяке озброєння, різне ракети, потужні машини залізні. У нас на всі доводи є коментар. Байрактар. Байрактар. Вони захопити хотіли нас зразу, і ми зачаїли на орків образу. З бандитів російських робить примар. Байрактар. Байрактар Російська поліція справи заводить На вбивцю рашистів ніяк не знаходить Хто ж винен, що в нашому полі глухар Байрактар Байрактар Веде пропаганду кремлівський урод, слова пропаганди ковтає народ, тепер нове слово знає їх цар. I don't know, Mango, who doesn't just sing <laughs> by Rektar uh, at random intervals throughout the day? I know I do. It's a very catchy tune, um, especially this lady staring at us at us at the end. How's it going, folks? Uh, welcome to another <laughs> welcome to another uh, weekly war update. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, always appreciated that everybody um, uh, everybody likes, uh, subscribes, and shares around the video and everything. Um, sorry, I was I was actually not uh, caught up looking at 
scrolling through YouTube shorts, I was actually caught up looking at the uh, looking at the map. So <laughs> there's that. At least I was doing that. I was doing something productive. So, uh, but thank you all for being here again. Uh, hit the like button, share this round, uh, do what you want to do, do what you need to do. And uh, yeah, let's get on with it. So uh, a lot's been happening. Um, it's the action hasn't necessarily slowed down, but it hasn't uh, picked up a whole hell of a lot either. So um, a lot of what's been happening is the uh, the Russian military has been moving into um, I'll bring the map up. Why not? Uh has been continuing their their move into uh like into the Donbass region at, uh uh they've started an offensive on the Donbass region in order to take it and the goal is essentially to uh split the country into we talked about this last time we're probably going to talk about it next time too um I'm only going to briefly touch on it yeah, that's essentially the goal is to split the country into and make this uh make all of this part of part of uh Russia and uh essentially um get part of the territory that Putin wanted in order for him to launch uh likely a second offensive onto uh into uh Ukraine again and um making sure that you know he gets the the entire slice of the pie if he makes it that long he doesn't seem to be in the best health. I'm not going to sit here and speculate on that uh, a whole hell of a lot um, uh, for now. But um, thank you for uh, dropping the link. And there's something that I didn't mention. I, I, I didn't mention it mainly because there's uh, only a couple people here. Uh, probably just me, <laughs> me, uh, J. Troy Doe and Mango. But um, yeah, we're at eight hundred and what was it? Eight hundred and seventy dollars in. Oh, that's the wrong file. What did I say? We're at wrong one. Eight hundred and seventy dollars and thirty-five cents in the uh, Ukraine charity. So uh, we have. Five days, less than five days to get to uh, get to that thousand dollars. So please, uh, please donate. Um, uh, I'll say more about it on the uh, on the main channel, but um, the uh, links are all down below. I was about to say, did I put all of the fucking links? Yeah, I did. <laughs> the links are all down below. Please check them out. Vote and uh, make sure me and Mango eat those uh, pod to meat nachos so that we can get some money over to the Ukrainian people. Um, aside from that, I'm going to stop scrolling in and out a million times. So, <clears throat> uh, a bunch of things have been happening. Murray Bull is still standing essentially. And I was, I was under the impression when, um, why is the map magical? Because it's interactive. You can interact with it and, uh, do your own thing. You can find out news stories that happened, uh, uh, Russian troops continue to shell Azovstal in uh, Mariupol, and the uh, the steel plant is actually what is their is their last holdout right now for both uh, civilians and um, soldiers that are in there. So uh, I thought for a while it was like a steel plant, like they're just in there under what corrugated roof you know like concrete all around them maybe yeah uh no it's actually like a massive bunker this bunker is meant to hold uh the forty thousand steel workers in the fucking area so it is a massive bunker and i have uh i have something on that here in uh in a little bit but we'll uh talk about that in just a just a second um, and yes, the links can be found there. Thank you very much, Mango. Uh, if you are looking for any of the charities and you want to give 50 cents, a dollar, a hundred dollars, thousand dollars, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's all appreciated. So anyway, um, so the Russian, uh, Russians have continued their offensive and they are just constantly shelling, um, Mariupol and the, uh, the steel plant. Um, uh, last time I, think I had a video of uh, them hitting it with a bunker buster and obviously that didn't work. There was a, a small window 
uh, that was given. Uh, I did repost this on my community tab. If you guys want to go look at that, uh, it was a small window that oh, this is the wrong. I have to switch accounts now. Um, okay, still, still not there. There it is. That's the one. There it is. It's right there. It's right here. Okay. So, for, so uh, they they agreed on a, a small green corridor for children and the elderly, uh, women, children, and the el elderly. And that was uh, a few days ago. Maripol, Manush, uh, Ber Berdyansk, Berdyansk, uh, Tokmak, uh, Orkiv and uh, Zeprzyzia. I'm never going to get that right. Zeprzyzia. If somebody kill me. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that, that was the, uh, or that's the road that they would go in order to uh, get to, I guess, uh, some kind of humanitarian aid and uh, safety and whatnot behind the Russian lines. Uh, and I'm not sure how many people left, but and or how many people are left in the steel plant but that was uh whoopsie that was what six days ago i believe uh i believe it's a yeah um six days ago so about a week ago um so they've they're still holding out after this uh after this last week and um it's still not looking good now Obviously, like there, there hasn't been a whole hell of a lot of uh, Ukrainian uh, advancement. I'm trying to see what this is. Oh, it's a water treatment plant. Um, not a whole lot of advancement uh, by the Ukrainian forces. The the Russians are essentially like holding a line here. It it seems. Uh, what's going on, two guns? Thank you for being here. Um, uh, the Russians are essentially holding a line and they're going to at some point probably encircle this area or try to encircle the, uh, like the outside of Donetsk, uh, over here and actually like close it in and take even more. And that'll give them the ability to stage troops down here as well as is, as well as in the North. So they'll have the South and the North in order to squeeze out anybody uh, any resistance and, uh, the only way to, uh, give aid would be from the, uh, from the, uh, West here. So that wouldn't be good, <laughs> but that, um, two guns. <laughs> but yeah, so now, um, but a lot of that still, rides on uh Mary Bowl because this steel plant this wild ass fucking steel plant that we have um all right
All righty, folks. Sorry about that. Um, hopefully you guys can all hear me and see me and everything. Uh, go screw. Uh, voice meter. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to listen to that. That's a sh I don't even like that. Um. So uh, yeah. Uh, long story short. Shut the fuck up. I tried to open a picture and my computer shut down. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? Are we having fun, guys? Are you having fun? I'm having fun. No, that's really frustrating, but um uh in the meantime, I'm just gonna put on some uh uh this. Damn, sorry guys. Fuck it. Get from here. Alright. Sorry about that. I need some music because I was kind of pissed off. Anyway, <laughs> unfortunately, there is no uh, burping girl in this stream. Uh, uh, speaking of content, yeah, it's gonna get a little, it's gonna get a little messed up at the end. So I'm going to, uh, I'll let you guys know. There is a content warning. Uh, I only have a few things when we get to the combat combat footage. Um, I didn't ask her before, but if uh, she's willing, uh, Mango can open up the voice chat or anybody else that wants to jump into voice chat. Uh, it, it's open. You can go in there. You can talk about it. Um, uh, that all being said, just be forewarned, we got some a uh, few fucked up things coming up at the very end. So uh, just stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that interruption. Uh, it happens. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. I'm going to try to open up that picture that I wanted to show you guys. Uh Please don't. All righty. All right. So if you're if you're looking at your screen, uh, this is our steel plant. This is uh, 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 apparently what they have. Uh, I can open it if need be. Okay, Mango will open it if need be. Um, uh, that's honestly one thing I really like using about using Streamyard. Streamyard versus OBS or Streamlabs. The stream won't end if your computer restarts. Yeah, that is pretty good. It's pretty nice to uh, to have Streamyard just continue the uh, continue the stream because OBS and yeah, Streamlabs especially. Streamlabs has so many fucking problems. I haven't used that forever, so uh, it's whatever though. All right, all righty, folks. So we were talking about the uh, steel plant before, and this is the picture I wanted to open up for you guys. Uh, Essentially, this is uh, like less of a steel plant and more of just a giant block of fortified concrete. It's and and then some. It's a massive bunker. So uh, we'll go through these uh, these clockwise, starting with the uh, start with the surface. Uh, it says on the surface are mile after mile of warehouses, furnish, furnaces. Uh, power plants and chimneys providing cover for Ukrainian troops. And this actually kind of reminds me of uh, me and um, me and my uh, section leader in Kuwait. Where the fuck did we go? Why did we go out to this place? We we're going out to some docks for some reason. I don't know. Uh, there, it was, it was a military mission, but I forget why we went out there. Um, Anyway, long story short, we ended up going into an industrial area and we got turned around. We got lost. We were like, we don't know where the fuck we're, we are going. Uh, and what ended up happening is we, we were in a place just like this. And this was right by all of the, uh, all the refineries and everything in, in Kuwait. Uh, like I, I'm talking we talk about miles there there were miles and miles and miles of just refineries so oh shit um so uh 
imagine getting lost in that and uh, men trying to traverse through that while it's all bombed to shit, and, you know, and everything. And uh, you're trying to fight into this concrete block, this bunker. It's got to be, it's got to be fucking hell. Um, cause the, the more you bomb it, like every time you bomb a, an area, the more the landscape changes. Um, what's going on? No justice, no peace. How are you, how are you doing? Um, uh, the more you bomb an area, the, the more the landscape changes and like conditioning an area is something that's talked about. And it's like, uh, that's what the Russians essentially have been doing with their shelling, and the rockets uh shelling includes rockets mlrs multiple launch rocket systems things like that like the the grad and um uh there's something else that they uh that they used uh and uh i guess the us just shipped a bunch of uh mlrs uh, units to uh to ukraine so we'll see we'll see how this war plays out folks uh so uh the tunnels are believed uh to be almost impossible to penetrate by bombing uh, that's why they were dropping the bunker busters because well that bunker buster it digs down into the ground before it actually goes off and with all of this it doesn't seem like it just seems like you would essentially be piling more shit on top of them and then blowing that that loose stuff out before you could actually get down into here so uh you know i guess we'll see because this is, this is supposed to withstand a nuclear a blast so there's plenty of there's plenty of uh security down there and it's it might be soviet area era but it's not necessarily um useless and by any means um excuse me the extensive tunnels allow the brigade to pop up and carry out guerrilla raids across Mariupol, and this is extremely important this is part of why they've been able to hold out for so long because with these uh with the uh, ability to go out and um uh, sabotage areas lay mines um and uh, uh establish like fighting positions um especially like if you're gonna go after tanks you want to be in a building and you want to be, you know, a certain distance up, not on the roof so that nobody can spot you, but a certain distance up so you can hit the tank from the top um, while also having protection on the top and, uh, you know, not so far from the ground below um, uh, that you can't get out safely, uh, usually like the third or fourth floor. But... Um, that all being said, uh, you can establish these positions and you can also get people out and get people in. You can establish supply lines a, uh, as thin as those might be. You can establish a, a supply line in order to get weapons and uh, personnel or uh, even food because an army marches on its stomach. So, you know, these people need food and they also got to shit. So they need shit tickets. They got to get toilet paper somewhere. Um, that along with, as you see, this guy's got crutches. So aid, you need uh, aid for the wounded and everything like that. Um, you need to uh, take the dead somewhere. So, and uh, if you're going to go and do guerrilla operations, one of the main things, one of the important things you have to do is collect your dead because you don't want the enemy to know anything about what you were doing. Uh, you want to strip the dead or take the body as a whole so that you can, so the enemy doesn't know, you know, your numbers or how many they, they were able to kill, um, or anything like, uh, or take any of the information that might be on that soldier. Um, so it's, yeah, these, these tunnels have been, uh, probably been, if this is the, like, the construction the actual construction i'm not just being fed bullshit um uh this has been uh one of the big reasons that mariupol has uh been able to stand for so long uh let's see so it's the only way to clear out the the only way to clear the place out would be use a chemical weapon or a chlorine gas um i believe they say specifically chlorine because chlorine is heavy so it it can be pumped in and it will just continue down until you know whatever whatever uh, until it gets to the bottom 
Uh, but I'm not 100% sure why chlorine. Maybe it's the most available. Um, but any chemical weapon they can use. They can use any chemical agent, nerve agents. They can use um, CS agents to, just to, uh, like, stun stun whoever, whoever's down there, make them unable to breathe, and just give them the uh, effect of suffocation. Um, or, you know, who knows what else they have. Uh, the the maze-like system is thought to contain around 1,500 Ukrainian troops. Now, that is fucking astounding. When I read that the first time, I was absolutely uh, amazed. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, hit that like button and uh, share this around. Subscribe. Please do. Also, feel free to correct me when I'm wrong. I'm more than happy to be wrong on this. I know things change. I know uh, not all the information is... Uh, the most, uh, well, it may be available, may not be the most accurate, so please do uh, help me out. Beer time. I'm a hard working man. I like my beer. If you want to call it a beer. Chlorine gas is extremely heavy, so it'll sink quickly to the lowest area possible, yes. And if you want to make a uh, similar thing, like you can, uh, if you want to make poison gas, you can <laughs> mix. Uh, what is it? Bleach and, uh, ammonia and bleach, and ammonia is an acid, and bleach is a very strong base, and they'll try and neutralize each other, and that creates chlorine, or, like, mustard gas or chlorine gas. Don't do that. Don't mix those it, it, as a cleaning product or anything like that. It'll kill everything, um, including yourself. Uh, and you can do the same with, uh, baking soda and vinegar and make carbon dioxide, and that's how you can, you can, like, Fill an aquarium with that and then put a piece of aluminum on top and it'll float because the aquarium will be full of heavy gas. Don't do it with the chlorine though. Don't do not do it with chlorine. Chlorine's too heavy. It'll break the glass and then you'll die. Anyway, so um, these 1500, that's 1500 Ukraine, Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian troops able to, able to um, go out and uh, conduct military operations open supply lines, um, uh, trade information, um, especially like if, uh, being forward observers for rockets, missiles, uh, bombs and artillery, uh, especially if they're able to get out and run an operation where they can spot, you know, where, where a missile can land is like, Oh shit, we got a whole company in this building setting up some kind of wild ass position and they're in just the right they're in just the right place just to, within range of you know some uh some rockets uh hit those motherfuckers and they'll you know try to hit them and that can be devastating not only to uh the uh the effort but as far as like personnel and equipment but as as far as morale because um Especially if they have no idea, you know, who spotted them and everything like that. Uh, that will, um, that will essentially like uh, cause confusion. And when your troops are confused, then they get pissed off. I've I've been there. It sucks. It's the worst. <laughs> no, the security team. The security team does not endorse mixing bleach and ammonia. One hundred percent. This is this is true. We do not. Uh, uh, what's going on to Batman? Learning a lot. Uh, hopefully, um, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a learning experience. That's what it is. All right. Graphic by John Lawson. Uh, I can look them up. I just found this one, like, on the internet, and I was like, oh, shit, I want to look this one. I want to use this just as a quick info, infographic. Anyway, uh, so, anybody that wants to look me up or look this up and correct me, by all means, like I said before. Uh, tunnels are highly secure and stretch up to six stories underground, which is uh, massive. I think that's a story is what, like 60, 20 feet or no, 60, uh, 10 or 20 feet. So, you know, 60 to 60 to 120 feet, um, which is ridiculous. That's a lot. That's no, not. I don't know. How tall is this story? But, uh, all right, last one. Deep Underground is a vast network of bunkers and tunnels building uh, built during the Cold War to safeguard the steel plant's 40,000 workers uh, in the event of a nuclear attack. So it's able to hold 40,000 people 
uh, <laughs> and uh, in case of a nuclear attack. So they would uh, be able to come out. Hang on one second. I'm just going to turn off all of these fucking alarms. Thank you. Um, on my old phone? I don't know why it's here. <laughs> it's definitely 60 to 20 feet. <laughs> Screw you. Any, anyway. <laughs> Foots of snow. I have bad depth perception. Anyway. Alright, so... This is, you can kind of like be, um, like, okay, this is kind of like, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Metro sexual, uh, Metro 2066 or whatever, whatever the fuck the, um, uh, the game is called. I haven't played it or like Fallout. This is kind of like the vault in Fallout, but not really. It's an, just an emergency bunker essentially, but this is why they've been able to hold out. Um, and why the, they're, uh, operations have been so successful plus they're you know um they're getting material from somewhere and unfortunately one of the places over here is this bridge wow now this bridge uh if this bridge is broken let's see let's see bridge from uh zatoka in Bilrod uh closed after missile strikes in the area. So they've been the uh Russians have been bombing this bridge, and this bridge is a major supply line for material uh to come into Ukraine uh from the west. Let's see, let's we can see where we're at. So Romania's been uh is over here they've been supplying uh, a lot of the a lot of the logistics a lot of the uh us and nato and uh and weapons and everything to ukraine and this is one of the routes they've been using um and it's not looking good for the fact that they're bombing the shit out of it and trying to break this down because as you can see if we look up a little bit north we have uh russian controlled areas uh I think this is a, I think this is actually like marshland or a bay. I'm not 100% sure because I haven't seen the, uh, let's see the key. I'm not sure. Okay. Oh shit. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry folks. All right. That didn't work. All right, whatever. I don't really need to change it back right now. So, long story short, the uh, unfortunate part is uh, the Ukrainians are are not doing a whole uh, are not doing so great in the uh, in the West, and um, a lot of that a lot of that is just um, the war essentially coming to a more more and more of a uh, stalemate, but. The Russians have been launching more and more offensives on the Donbass region, basically just uh, annihilating the region. And, uh, well, long story short, it ain't looking good. Uh, we will have to see what happens next week, over the next week, see if the uh, Donbass offensive, offensive finally takes Mariupol and the, uh, the city falls. I know... For whoever's stuck there, whoever's still there, I really, really hope that nothing, I really, really hope that the, that they're not just like tortured to death, essentially, because the Russians are probably going to do that. They are going to mutilate these motherfuckers and probably execute uh prisoners i wouldn't be surprised if we see reports of that coming out we've seen a lot of we've seen a lot of uh 
uh, other atrocities coming from the uh, Russian military. Um, not to say that the Ukrainians haven't done their share of atrocities and things in this war, but um, yeah, uh, the, we have seen a lot here on this channel, especially of the uh, um, the Russians, and they don't. If his if history is any indication, the Russians don't take very kindly to uh, uh, enemies or enemy prisoners. I could say. Alrighty. So, um, here let me uh, now let me uh, real quick think about. Okay, never mind. Let me uh, go over this. Let me go over this. So we we're talking about supply lines because uh, that makes a little more so uh, makes a little more sense to go into. Alrighty. So we we're talking about uh, supply lines and, and stuff like that, but uh, one of those supplies is personnel. So you have to have people, and uh, foreign fighters are one of the one of the main things. And it says down here. 20,000 so far have joined the fight, and apparently it is extremely easy. Um, a lot easier than I had actually initially looked up. Uh, so we're going to read this article and uh, just talk about it a little bit. So foreign fighters describe how easy it is to get into Ukraine and get weapons. And you can look at this as like, hey, this is, a, this is actually a big red flag because... Uh, we'll see as the article goes on. But you never know who's going to go in and what their ideology is and why they're actually there, um, especially in an emergency like this. All right, so let's uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and read this. Yeah. My mouth is fucking tired. All right. <clears throat> Thousands of foreign fighters have gone into Ukraine to aid the war against Russia. Some sometimes joining the war and getting getting a access to weapons weapons is as easy as crossing the border foreign foreign fighters told the day the caller approximately two twenty thousand people are believed to have responded to ukrainian pre Fuck, why can't i talk president vladimir Zelensky's call for on foreign fighters to join ukraine's international region legion what unique new york unique new york the skeleton, or the the arsonist had oddly shaped feet. The arsonist had oddly shaped feet. Wow! All right. A unit, a unit within the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, some Americans and Canadians, however, are joining the war independent of re res registering with the Ukrainian military. Marine Corps veteran Brian uh, Altamirano said he applied for Ukraine's International Legion, but decided against it after realizing that most of the time, joining requires a contract and the members almost never see combat in the front lines. Instead, he decided to independently freelance, it's quote unquote, uh, with a group of American veterans on the, on the ground in Ukraine. The veterans knew how to get to the front, front lines and had connections, he told the Daily Caller. To get into Ukraine, Altamirano uh, said he just went to the Poland-Ukraine border with a group of U.S. veterans and presented his passport. Uh, Altamirano set up his will before traveling, he said. He's 29 years old and is uh, currently studying at Columbia University. There's a possib possibility that I will never make it back to the United States, he said. In the military, there's a concept of a calling and the idea of something grasping, grasping you and an inner desire to do something more. I was compelled to do more than just care packages, he added. Uh, he and his team are reaching, are teaching Ukrainian soldiers American military tactics in southern Ukraine, including how to walk, how to walk in columns, uh, surveying rooms, and how to fight when there are civilians around, use certain weapons, and provide medical aid, Altamirano said. Some of the Ukrainian soldiers are civilians who are volunteering to go to the front lines and have zero experience, he added. Uh, we're trying to get our hands on a javelin so we can teach people how to use that as well. Um, this looks like uh, old Alt Altamirano. He looks like a, a, a spry young fellow. Uh, uh, looks like the kind of guy to, to be out there. Um, 
there have been casualties of Ukrainian soldiers from uh, his team. What <laughs> there have been casualties of uh, Ukrainian soldiers from his team, and what he has been, uh, what he has seen has been horrible. He added, uh, or quote unquote horrible. He added. Uh, when it comes to combat, it's something you have to experience in order to truly understand it. He said, noting he said, noting a lot of uh, members of the U.S. military would not be ready for fighting the Russians. This is true. This is 100 percent true. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Like, there's there's a lot of soldiers, myself included, that would not be uh, set up to fucking um, fight in a conventional war. Be totally different. Um, uh, if I were if I were to go over there and actually do this, I would be I would probably be training a whole, whole hell of a lot with this dude because I'm not fresh out. I didn't do uh, combat combat arms for the last five years of my service so it's like it, it makes sense that you know it makes sense that uh you know i i would need some training but anyway especially when it comes to their weapons too like a javelin i never used a javelin an ak never shot an ak so uh, i would need to to know because well i need to know how to how a, a fucking 762 feels um as far as oh, instead of 62 by four five nine whatever um anyway uh Altamira Altamirano said his group will be moving further east to fight with the Ukrainian millet militia <clears throat> a Ukrainian militia since the military has quote a lot of cautionary things to prevent us from engaging with the enemy in a faster way end quote a former Canadian sniper that goes by the uh, nom de guerre, uh, Wally, and 38-year-old U.S. veteran Carlos Jones also volunteering to fight uh, on Ukraine's front lines and pending of registering with the Ukrainian military. Wally gained prominence after posts on Russian social media allegedly falsely claimed uh, that he was the deadliest sniper in the world and that he had died fighting in action, according to CBC News. He debunked his death by uh, re reappearing in an interview saying, I'm pretty much the last person to know about my death. <laughs> what a badass. Uh, by 39AK. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, by 5-4. And we, we have uh, the, the M240 is what I had in. I had a 240 Bravo in Iraq. So uh, that fires a 7.62. It's essentially a, a 308 at that point. Uh, essentially the same thing. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, he did debunked his death. No, uh, and that didn't have uh, and that didn't have his cell. Oh, that he didn't have his cell phone with him when the rumors started spreading. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. That's fucked up. He's like, oh, I just didn't have my phone. <laughs> New phone, who this? Did you know you're dead? What? <laughs> wow. All right. Let's see. Hmm. Russian army has used the AK-47 uh, for a coup. Oh, for a couple of decades now. Uh, five. Five point five two, if I remember correctly. Five point five two. It's weird. For the uh for the AK okay AK seventy four I'm an idiot yeah and they just came out with the AK twelve which is supposedly a bad uh yeah a couple of decades um yeah that's one way one hell of a way to learn about your death um but yeah is it uh AK seventy four five point five twos or five five six I don't know because uh. If the uh, it, it would make sense because I think um, I forget why the U.S. I think the U.S. switched over to the five five six uh, as a smaller. It's, uh, I think it's a smaller, faster round. Plus, it's uh, saves on bullets because they're smaller. Maybe I don't fucking know. I'm not hundred percent sure why they switched over uh, because it used to be like the uh, the M one and M fourteen and uh like the thompson and shit that was way back in the day uh uh and russia still used that cal mainly okay okay 5.45 by 39 is the ak-74 okay okay 5.45 by 39 all right that's 
it's not a caliber I've ever fucking even heard of. But um, I would, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to send me a picture and I'll, I'll take a look or look see. Please do send me a picture of those rounds. Anyway, so Wally and Jones uh, met with the help of a mutual connection and started interacting via group chat to join a Ukraine military unit together. Wally is a sniper and Jones came to Ukraine as a medic. Uh, but has also served as an infantryman on the front lines. I basically have no paperwork done here, Wally told the Daily Caller. I'm here with a visa and a weapon. That's fucking wild. Uh, being independent in the Inter International Legion is better because you're more free, Jones and Wally said, but sometimes presents itself as a negative when going through military checkpoints in the country. Uh, uh, going through the foreign legion process is very, very slow, so I think a lot of the guys are realizing that too when they want to go now. Because they they won't hear anything back for weeks, Jones said, noting that he applied for uh, applied but went into Ukraine independently. Uh, when crossing the border into Ukraine, it's uh, quote, it's likely it's like any customs. Uh, they put a stamp. It was very easy. Wally said, getting weapons is equally as easy if you know Ukrainian soldiers. Wally and Jones said, adding that they get their supplies from anywhere and everywhere, including tanks, <laughs> including tanks and drones. No shit. Uh, well, we've seen that the Russians have left a, a shitload of equipment behind. Uh, a lot of their uh, equipment is getting, you know, destroyed. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's getting, you know, javelined and, uh, you know, the top popped off and everything like that. Uh, a lot of what's happening is, you know, they're abandoning equipment because you can't, you know, easily carry around a 50 cal. It's not not the easiest thing in the fucking world. So those things get left behind and people are just like, oh, shit, I'll take that. Some people get killed and their rifles are on the ground. So you pick that up because, well, it's better than the piece of shit you have or you just didn't have one before. So uh, that makes a, a lot of sense that it would actually be kind of easy. That was it. Yeah. It's the weather. All right. Uh... See, some foreign fighters have quit because they uh, have to accept that it's uh, going to be chaos and sometimes there are uh, not enough weapons, Wally said. The language barrier and fighting fields are some of the main problems that, that they have had to overcome both at it. There's very little tree coverage and you can't see the tanks uh, you can't see the tanks in the distance, but they can see you. Uh, you're in the fields, Jones said. A Ukrainian soldier in the same unit as Wally and Jones who goes by... Uh, uh, Artem told the Daily Caller that his team responds positive, positively to foreign fighters because, uh, quote, there is always something to learn since they have, quote, uh, a totally different approach to the war, end quote. And that's that, that's true because um, um, what is it? Uh, they went to that caliber five four. I uh, went to that call where say saw how successful the switch to the 556 was for NATO. Okay. Okay. I can dig that. That makes sense. Uh, uh, I mean, go with what works. Why wouldn't you? So, uh, all right. Uh, yeah, we can go for an hour. All right. So, that was pretty wild. Do you guys want to watch this? Uh, one's in the chat if you want to watch this. Uh, watch this interview. Um, Otherwise, uh, we can move on. Move on. Actually, I think I have some uh, some white video for you for you guys. I def do do a bunch of white videos for you guys. Oh man. That's not good. So I'm gonna play from the top here. I hope so. All right. All right. Okay. I got a. I got a little information, and then uh, you guys wanna. You guys wanna watch it. Where am I? All right, 
we'll watch it. Well, I'm alive. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, fine for And I, uh, I pretty much was the the last person to know to learn about my death. <laughs> so when I, I I was on the front line without my cell phone, obviously for security reason, because the you know the frequency and such can be uh, located. And uh, so the, the the truth is sometimes uh, can be brutal or just boring. And this time it was just boring. The the truth was that. And my cell phone was just not with me. It was turned off <laughs> uh, on the remote base. I was on the front line. Yes, it was dangerous though, uh, but I was alive, not a single scratch. <laughs> That's actually really funny. What's up, Mr. Fear? What's going on, Bill Portley? <laughs> That's actually really funny. Be real, like, dude. We heard you're dead, and he's like, no, nah, I just left my phone at home. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that's too That's too funny. <laughs> Always appreciate it. Um, 2033, okay. Uh, Artem from 2030, Metro 2033. Okay, yeah, I haven't played that game. I might have to play it. Um, that and Escape from Tarkov, because I only have uh, Fallout, but Fallout's pretty great because, excuse me, since I started a new campaign, I'm running into a, a whole hell of a lot more enemies, and I'm learning a lot more. Um, but I'm not getting the same, like, I'm not getting the same good weapons. Uh, I got an explosive sniper rifle, but I haven't gotten, like, anything else that's really good. It's all, like, freezing, cryo laser Pew. all right folks <laughs> so i got a little bit of info for you and then uh i got a couple couple silly videos and uh after that i'll take a, i'm gonna take a quick break i'm gonna use the latrine um if you guys want uh you can dip out. That's when we're going to get into more of the heavy stuff. We're going to get into like the combat footage and stuff like that. Very last thing that I have um, for you guys. Uh, not the thing that I'm going to like close out with, not the very last video, but the last video that I have from uh, YouTube is pretty messed up. You're going to see some dead folks, and we're going to actually, I'm going to actually uh, talk about it a little bit. So if you don't want to see that, by all means, dip out. But uh, let me uh, let me show you a couple silly videos, and then uh, I'm gonna take a latrine break, and uh, we will be right back to talk about the the combat footage. All right, so we got we <laughs> some highly adaptive soldiers here, folks. Look at that high speed switch. Tactical Ollie. Oh, with a reverse switch. Oh, and disappears like a ghost into the night. Fucking fantastic. Hell yeah. Everybody, please support the Ukrainian people. They really, they really do need your help. There is a link. I know Mango is going to uh, post it so that I can uh, pin it because I forgot to do that the first time. Um, and you guys can help out the Ukrainian people. There are instructions on how to do so. Uh, I don't touch any of the money. Mango doesn't touch any of the money. It goes straight to the charity of your choice. Um, damn. Yeah. Smooth operator. <laughs> Tell me about it. All right. Um, yeah, let's, let, let's learn a little bit. So why, why does Russia think there are Nazis in Ukraine? And then this guy is actually pretty fucking dope. Uh, uh, Ryan McBath. He's been all over, all over my feed. I don't know if you guys have seen. I don't know if you guys have seen this video, but uh, let's let's kind of find out what's been going on. He does a lot of these shorts. It's kind of how I started seeing him, but um, he does regular videos as well and everything like that. And heavy weapons expert of twenty years in the military, the U.S. military or the U.S. Army, I think. Um, software developer triathlete he's a fucking weird beast of a man <laughs> but 
That all being said, uh, yes, please uh, learn to help the peoples here. Thank you, Mango, so much for uh, doing that. I didn't mean to open that. Uh, uh, replace pinned message. There we go. All righty. Thank you, folks. Please, uh, any money helps, uh, 50 cents to 100 bucks. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you can give, please do. Um, you can write it off on your taxes next year. And... Um, it, it does go to a good good cause. Not only one of them is faith based. None of them help um, military causes. All humanitarian aid. Um, please do check them out. Thank you so much, Mango. Um, and thank you all for being here. For everybody that's in the chat, all of the lurkers, and uh, especially everybody that hits the like button, subscribes, and shares this out. Let's learn a little bit. Oh, that's super low. Is in Ukraine. So back in 2014, pro-Russian separatists seized government buildings in the Donbass region of Ukraine. Russia took advantage of this chaos by flooding volunteers and weapons into that region. Some civilians formed militias of their own and fought the separatists. And one of those units was kind of like the Ukrainian equivalent of the Proud Boys or the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, look at that battalion. Ku Klux Klan. Flag. Whatever. That's I don't think they really deserve the respect of me correcting them. Fuck <laughs> those people. <laughs> this battalion fought bravely, but they also tortured some separatists, and they have a pretty extreme ideology. But Ukraine integrated this unit into their army because the Ukrainian constitution guarantees <laughs> freedom of speech, even speech you or I might not agree with. So why does Russia say they're denazifying Ukraine when their leader is Jewish and all Ukraine has is a battalion of their equivalent of the Proud Boys? It's because Russia needed a casus belly. They needed a reason to invade and sell this pointless war to their people. 100%. Got to get people riled up. Um, I got some, I, I got a, uh, a phone call or a couple phone calls, but um, I'm going to hold off on playing those uh, because it's just audio and I'm kind of like, kind of worry about playing them because it could just be it's very it's it's very hard to tell as opposed to video where you can see the body language of people and everything like that but um yeah the crew crows crayon yeah <laughs> fuck him uh yeah if he's putting out longer videos of cool stories from when he served yeah i gotta i gotta start checking him out more he's a he's a pretty great dude but uh, very knowledgeable and uh, a lot of things, a lot of themes. Um, so ow, I just picked something, uh, something off my fucking leg, uh, scab, and it really, really hurt. So, um, do does the U.S. military have any kind of like battalions like this? Yes, absolutely. Do they have like? Is it an entire battalion? Not necessarily. But there's a lot of, like, good old boy system that can change from unit to unit. And um, I don't know if anybody's heard of the uh, Prince Hall Masons. But it's essentially how it was explained to me. Uh, the Masons um, are they're Freemasons because you have to have been of uh, free blood or something like that. So you can't be black and, you know, can't be a, a African-American uh so one time, I guess I can use that fucking term um, and not hate it. Um, so uh, you're not able to, to like be black and be a Mason. So there was a, a, a someone who came up with the Prince Hall Masons, an offshoot of the Masons, and instead of it's just like flashy and it's kind of like a, a gang affiliation kind of type mentality as was it was as was explained to me anybody can correct me and be like yo that's not what it is here's an article um but what ended up happening is there was a close-knit group including the first sergeant in one of the units that i was in and uh holy shit was their favoritism and yeah uh, i did not have the melanin content for any kind of favoritism on that part uh uh, fortunately, a lot of the people that they were trying to play favorites with ended up being really fucked up. One of them, one of them was like, I think he was essentially AWOL and he got caught with a bunch of like illegal guns in the back of a car in Louisiana. And they arrested him in Louisiana with a bunch of fucking guns in the back of his, uh, his truck and shit. It's fucking ridiculous. Uh, but 
And I'm not talking about like there's outright discrimination or anything like that, but it was it shit happens. And that's just a, a very minor case of things like that happening. And there's plenty of races, there's plenty of super far right people, there's super uh super far left people, there's um gang members that that, that join and then they take their knowledge uh and their combat experience and they take that back to uh whatever you know cartel or gang member or gang that they uh work for and they train their soldiers essentially it's uh i mean it's a pretty common tactic uh and it's extremely hard to control because well you can't essentially tell is all the time who's a gang member who's affiliated with what uh until you start you know monitoring them or they have some you know identifiers or something like that you know i.e tattoos and whatnot uh hence the reason you'll when you uh go into the military they'll ask you about any tattoos that you have and they'll ask you to show you show your tattoos at maps because if you have anything that's you know gang related or anything that's um extremist related like swastikas or or anything like that they'll be like no you have to either get that covered up or you're just not getting in like that's it so um there's a there's a waiver for everything though <laughs> anyway <laughs> but um so that that happens and uh it's a little bit different here because they absorb this entire uh, battalion into their military but it does make sense because they were fighting separatists in their own country and they have a very limited military it's not like our military that just has every dollar in the absolute world to be blowing on whatever they want uh you know every day of the week so um it sucks does it make them look bad kind of but you know what not really because eventually a lot of those people are going to die and they're going to get separated and it's not going to uh turn out very well for the a south battalion but uh let's give a uh, i'll give you a couple more and then uh don't really have i don't know i'll put on the uh on patrol music <laughs> hang on one second turn this off so old boy's out here, and he's like, uh, so Russian pig, uh, oh, uh, Rus and China in German. <laughs> Says we got some new equipment from Uncle Sam, and what he's got there is a uh, mod deuce, the 50 cal and M2 Browning 50 caliber machine gun, and I love the sound. Yeah, that 50 cal, that, that motherfucker will rock you. It's so nice. It's so fucking cool. Um, <laughs> I know a guy that somehow managed to uh, get into the Marines despite having 17 felony charges when he was a, a youth. Yeah, that happens all the fucking time. Uh, one of the guys, <laughs> I shit you not, uh, in Korea, Kuhn, he was a, uh, yeah, spelled exactly that way. Um, he was a Native American. I, I think he was from New York. I believe he was. I'm not 100% sure, because, but he was like, he had tattoos all over his body and he had uh, infidel in English and Arabic on on the sides of his neck. Uh, him and the guy he came over, with, came over with were like very shell-shocked, let's just say it, say that way, from the, their time in Afghanistan. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he had tattoos all over and like he had a, uh, a what is it a, like a breach septum or whatever it is a hole in his in his nose from snorting coke and everything like that and uh my 
my girlfriend at the time in Korea had hand tattoos. There's a waiver for everything. Yeah, you, you can always get in. Trust me. Uh, I saw one of those mod deuces mounted on the back of a Chevy, Chevy Suburban. That's pretty fucking cool. Um, yeah, if you get the opportunity, do it. But it's like $5 a round. Um, oddly turned on by that sound. Deviated septum, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, yeah, well, you should be because uh, I have this video because I'm, I'm rock hard. <laughs> anyway. No, no, no. But this is, yeah, this this is just funny. Just watch. No, no, no. You say take me home. I said no, Perignon. You said no, no, no. I said no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. I just like that. I just like the guy just sitting there staring at it. No, no, no. You say <laughs> hey, take me home. I said no, Perignon. You said no, no, no. I said no, 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 no. You bet your ass I would be fucking doing that if I were on the front lines. Which <laughs> apparently ain't that hard, folks. All right. Now, Oof. excuse me. Um, I shouldn't have done that. Y'all should check out that movie. <laughs> um, yeah, BGTV is going live at nine. I'm not gonna be on here too terribly long. Uh, all right, let's see. Crane. All right, I'm just gonna have this up, folks. This is the part of the show where we take a quick break because I got to pee. And then um, we're going to get into uh, some videos and uh, some other things. Uh, I do have a couple, excuse me, community posts, I believe, that I saved. Uh, here, I'll have to, I'll look them up uh, real quick um, for you guys. Hopefully uh, you are enjoying this. And uh, hit the like button if you are. Uh, please do. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, this is this is the one. So. All righty. Uh, shit's about to get heavy. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. Um. I will, uh, I'm going to uh, jump off and uh, take a uh, latrine break real quick, go on patrol, and I will see you guys in just a couple moments. How's that sound? And we'll get into it. Um, if anybody wants to dip out, go to the server and talk about what what, what they saw or what they're, you know, what they think uh, so far, by all means. Um, if Mango, you want to go over there uh, when we get into this, by, uh, for sure. Uh, but we got some things to go through. Anyway, um, <clears throat> sorry for delaying so much. I don't know where my thingamajig is. Stop doing that. There it is.
For real, subscribe to uh, Ali Dean, the human being, and uh, check out the Bad Late Night Show. It's uh, it's actually really fun. Her and Beth are quite the dynamic duo. Plus, they're very pretty, so check them out and everything and whatnot. Um, they're both, um, I don't know, uh, unavailable, attractive women. There you go. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe the the show. They like to talk about shit. Um, really like lizard side of this. I'll joke aside. I appreciate that. Um, I'm doing my best. Uh, I'm not trying to purport myself to be any kind of expert or anything like that. Uh, I'm just seeing this. I'm pointing out what I know and uh, trying to like work through the tactics as I as I see them. Um, so we got a couple of. Uh, couple of news stories and uh, and then uh, a lot of this. So this is one thing I actually did want to uh, check out with you guys. So this is uh, this is old school. This is like the it first is. mines that ever that ever got planted. This is this is how you did it back in the day. What they would do to actually clear minefields, like um, you know, World War One, World War Two, there were minefields. You would even take a knife, a K-bar, and you would sit there, your bayonet, whatever it might be, and you would stab around into the ground to see if you hit something um, because you want to take up uh, anti-tank and anti-personnel mines. It's a, it's actually... Uh, a lizard is, an ex, is a sex expert. This is very true. Uh, ladies. Uh, they're both single, attractive women. <laughs> <laughs> I said they're both uh I didn't say they were single. I said they were both unavailable. <laughs> Are they both single? I don't know. Whatever. They're both they're both women. Supposedly. Look at their show. <laughs> anyway. Thank you guys for being here. Hit that like button. All right, so this is actually really old. They, um, and what, was, what I was going to say is uh, it's actually safer to clear anti-tank mines like this than it is to clear anti-personnel mines because uh, anti-tank mines are meant to go off with like a lot of pressure. So the pressure of a car or a, uh, or a tank, obviously, an armored vehicle, that's what's uh, meant to set them off. Um uh, anti-personnel mines obviously are meant to be stepped on. So they're not going to be do a whole much, a whole lot of damage to a tank, maybe a, a, you know, a civilian vehicle, but really what they're meant to do is actually maim. They're not meant to kill. They're meant to maim. So uh, what do you want? What you want uh, uh, ideally is something like a toe popper or something like that. Something that's going to uh, take off someone's foot or uh, just shred them up. Uh, take off their armor, shred their arms or hands, uh, burn them, uh, 
cause disorientation or something like that if you want to use chemical weapons um things like that that are just going to take one maybe two soldiers out of the fight because that requires the rest of the squad to actually have to pick them up take them and you know uh care for them and uh take them out of the area uh, it also compromises whatever mission they may may be doing whether that's going to be a patrol or if that's uh setting up a, a position within you know enemy lines one that's going to be an alert to the enemy and two that's uh obviously going to uh, deter them from going in further at that time at least and uh, force them to uh redo their battle tactics so um yes buffalo up against uh 100 uh you injure one soldier and you take out three that's that's exactly right so uh what what he's talking about essentially is when if i were to step on a landmine uh i would uh get my get my foot blown off and two people have to carry me now you say well you can firemen's carry somebody but that's not necessarily the most ideal uh you know i'm gonna be in a shitload of pain that's usually to get somebody out of an emergency situation anyway um you're not going to do that for an extended period of time it's it's not comfortable it's not ideal um but yes 100 percent puffle up because thank you so much uh no i'm saying they're both single because they are okay sweet everybody check out the uh, single bad late night show they <laughs> there you go. I don't fucking know. <laughs> and this is Radio Free Europe, Radio Free uh, Liberty, and it's funded in whole or in part by the American government. So there you go. Hey, Miss Rain. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. I uh, replied your email. I hope you got it. Oh, you guys might be interested to hear this. Uh, Miss Rain, I know some other people might have donated as well. We're at 800 and was 870. Yeah, because I had that up. That's what I had up. I did. Yep, 870 and dollars and 35 cents. So thank you so much for your contribution. It's always appreciated. Thank you for being here. Uh, <laughs> на вот это поле. Вот, кстати, следы даже на поле от их гусеничной техники отстреливались и прятались обратно в лесу. Сейчас. Okay, I'm gonna try and read this. I will uh, turn him down a little bit. Uh, it says, "Watch uh, minesweeping teams at work near the Ukrainian capital." I thought this was actually gonna be in English. I'm sorry. Uh, this is a forest near Kiev. Uh, excuse me, Kiev. Kiev. We learned that the other day, did we not? Um, this is a forest near Kiev. Uh, over there in the forest uh, was hiding was a hiding place for Russian artillery. So he's talking about over here, probably somewhere over here. And what uh, what we read in that art, or what I read in that article earlier, was that they were fighting in open fields. And this is a lot of what they're kind of talking about because that artillery is hiding in in the uh, forest, and it it's surrounded by infantry. It's surrounded by you know people who you know soldiers so it's if you try and come across this field you're gonna you're gonna get you know murked down you're gonna get uh slaughtered um especially if they have uh heavy weapons or um armor uh armored vehicles with them tanks etc so uh plus in order to slow if they have to dip out in order to slow in advance they put down mines and it's kind of goes back to hey well they you know they might be searching for anti-personnel mines too well uh it's kind of also because um tanks need supporting infantry so the tanks are going to come through and then the infantry is also going to come through behind them uh they would come out here to fire you can still see the traces of the tracks and he's talking about this is mobile artillery and then go back to hide in the forest it's strictly for getting to go beyond these cordons uh, along the road because there could be mines he says 
In the fields near the Russian military positions, Ukrainian sappers are at work. And sappers are um, engineers uh, specifically meant to get rid of, uh, to deal with explosives, breach doors, things like that. I'll kind of explain um, sapper stuff a little bit. I'm not a sapper. I wish I was. But uh, I'll explain a little bit uh, of stuff related to that uh, probably the next time I go out to the uh, the woods. Just poking away. The enemy used anti-tank mines. Yeah, see? They're looking for anti-tank mines. A uh, battery of rocket launchers was stationed here. So the MLRS. MLRS is uh, typically mobile. Um, and by mobile, I mean it's a truck with rockets on it, as opposed to, uh, say, like an artillery piece, like you would you would think of a big ass gun. Uh, so they covered their flanks and positions with anti tank mines. So they covered their yeah, and uh, they're typical. There are typical telltale signs of anti personnel landmines, uneven ground, or small cavities. That's what he says. This happens to clear an area used by forestry workers. That was really itchy. A civilian car was destroyed by a landmine nearby a few days ago. Jesus Christ. So an anti-tank mine usually contains about 20 pounds of explosives, like 10 to 20 pounds of explosives. So that uh, that would have annihilated whatever car and, you know, personnel inside. Uh, since the Russians were on offensive, uh, I would expect the Ukrainians to use more mines. Uh, well, they, they had a fighting position. Um, what they were doing was uh since they were in the forest they were coming out you know at whatever intervals uh from the forest so they wouldn't be seen hiding in the forest they wouldn't be seen overhead and they would come out launch their uh payload um and in the meantime he's talking he was talking about like their front uh their flanks uh were covered by anti-tank mines so you couldn't have uh tanks coming up and trying to sneak up on them while they're uh, running uh, operations or while they're vulnerable, you know, setting up their MLRS or whatever it might be. So um, you would think the mines are more of a, you know, defending the homeland type of thing, but it's also a strategic thing. If you set mines, you have to know where every mine is because if you don't, well, then like you're, you're in a lot of trouble because you have to go fucking find them. They're, they're not just going to, you know, disappear after a amount of time. They're just going to, well, sit there until someone steps on them or a car drives over it or whatever. And, uh, you know, and times like uh, like this, this current war, that's uh, unacceptable, especially with it being a conventional war and the amount of civilians, the amount of personnel that have been lost. So uh, that might explain it, but... Um, this is the first time uh, we've kind of talked about mines as well. So uh, we can also look into you, the Ukrainians using mines. Um, I do have a little bit of, they've been doing a lot of saboteur things. I uh, think you're going to see like railways and supply lines being bombed and stuff like that. So uh, that that's more of what the Ukrainians would be doing. Uh uh, how about I just, uh, uh, ooh, uh, hey, <laughs> it's all up to you. I can't stop you, Miss Rain. I can't stop you. <laughs> but, uh, Mango, Mango, uh, you approve. Because <laughs> we do have a, we do have a, fundraiser to finish it out on on saturday so i don't know i wasn't expecting that i'm not gonna lie um mango uh we'll we'll talk about it we can talk about it here <laughs> anyway anyway uh we can't send them some of those rocket rope deals uh america uses for this uh what is it called uh 
Um, Mac. Um, uh, hinges, rocket, rope, deal. Oh, no. Um, uh, there we go. Oh, one, we have to get them over there. Um, what the hell is it called? Uh, uh, Miklik. There it is. Mine clearing line charge. So this is what a, this is a Miklik. This is what he's talking about. All right. so, bloop. So, boom. And long, uh, basically what this thing does is it has a bunch of explosives, uh, high explosives on, on that big rope. That's what that big white thing is. Um, I'll play it back for everybody that wants to see. Uh, it was very quick. Only 11 seconds. Oopsie. <laughs> In the fucking volume. I'm an idiot. Um, and this, this big white thing that falls is a bunch of explosives. And what it does is when it falls onto the ground and they detonate it, it, uh, it's, its purpose is to, uh, use the shockwave, use that detonation to, uh, set off or damage, uh, uh, or, um, neutralize any, uh, any mines, uh, that might be in the area in order to make, uh, clearing that area or, uh, possibly getting through that area a lot quicker. Um, as you can see, it actually does a shitload of damage down this, down the way. And you're like, oh shit, well, they could just probably drive through. Depends on the, the road material as well. Uh, that, that could just create a gigantic fucking, uh, trench in the road. Now you're like, Oh shit. Well, we got to fill that now. Uh, we got to, in order to get around it and it, you know, it might've helped you out, but did it really? So, uh, <laughs> boom noodle, <laughs> boom snake, <laughs> explode your rope. <laughs> I returned from the, I just got food out of the oven. Um, <laughs> yes, this is a Miklik. This is a, the first time I ever saw this, like, in any action, like, on film. I've never seen this in, like, action in action. Uh, I, never, I was never in that kind of, that kind of war. Um, so, um, first time I ever saw this, it was, um, uh, it was footage from the Battle of Fallujah, and there was a sniper that was just like relentlessly pounding the uh, the Marines, uh, the military, or the U.S. military that was uh, invading. And so they're like, "Fuck this!" They sent in the Miklik and just destroyed an entire like city block of uh, of buildings just to get this one sniper because they couldn't find out where he was. That he was just you know too good. So hey. When um, when tactics fail, technology prevails. Maybe, who knows? But uh, yeah. So these things are these aren't a joke. None to fuck with. Yeah. So it's not necessarily a missile. The the rocket that launches it is just a rocket to propel that rope into the air the the boom rope um uh fuck my ass and call me a bitch jesus oh yeah somebody's gonna click that oh well oopsie i didn't want to click that one all right yeah we're not gonna watch any more of that but thank you yeah so long story short they probably can't use that because of the soil it's the, it's their job they will uh, probe every centimeter for as long as it takes as you know it's, uh, it's an old joke and a bad one hold on oopsie who is this 
Це ви сад. Вони будуть тикати кожен сантиметр, да. Скільки треба, бо стільки буде. Ви знаєте, да, що сапер... As you know, a sapper can only make a mistake once. <laughs> That's an old joke, an old an old and a bad one. Uh, Sniper 47. I don't, I don't know. I don't know the full story behind it, but that's the, that's the story that I know. Uh, if you want to send me any articles, videos on it, sure. I will, uh, I'll check them out later. Not in, not in this stream though. Um, I would die in the battlefield. Uh, most people would. It's true. No one is pushing us. We're being very cautious. It says this is the sapper talking, uh, the retreating Russian army left behind these rocket launchers. Ooh, I've been talking about this quite a bit. These are UXOs, unexploded ordin ordnance. So um, rocket launchers and stuff that have been destroyed but still have live rounds in them, those have to be taken out and destroyed. And if they have to be blown in place, you have to have, you got to know how to do that. Plus, you got to keep people the fuck off of it because they think it's cool. Local residents says, uh, say the invent... Uh, President says the invaders plundered the homes. They didn't say much apart from we're liber the Liberation Army. There are Russians and Buryat, uh, ethnic Mongol soldiers, uh, of Russians and Buryat. Uh, they came to our houses, smashing everything inside, basically looting, taking away anything valuable in wheelbarrows. It was scary. Thank God they're gone, he says. This is a resident. Uh, you can find dangerous things during mine sweeps. Sappers found in an unexploded shell outside of the village. Um, a lot of times, shells will fall and they won't explode. They will just be sitting there and they'll have a fuse and be live, essentially. Uh, this, oh, this is a, yeah. Air, some kind of aircraft. The Ukrainian military says this Russian plane went down with three bombs still hanging on its wings. This is kind of this is the kind of damage to uh, expect in this type of war. Um, really weird that there's like this uh, star pattern on a Russian that like broke. It just broke through naturally in this star pattern. That's fucking wild. <laughs> this is a jet that bombed the Ukrainian village of uh, Kopilov. 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 Uh, they made two approaches and hit the center of the village and the field outside it. So ground attack planes is, is what they were. Uh, TIE fighter jet were here. I think it, it SU-27? I don't know. I don't know. It sounds stupid. Again. Then they left and uh, were attacked by our jets. He says. All right. Your teams are preparing to, uh, preparing to uh, blow up the Russian munitions. All right, now, what we saw earlier uh, with the Miklik, excuse me, was kind of the difference is what I was talking about. This is um, explosives. These ones are, are buried, but uh, they're in much softer soil. They're using a whole hell of a lot softer soil to blow these, excuse me, in a controlled demolition, uh, controlled, de uh, controlled, de controlled detonation. Got that one out at some point. Anyway, so <laughs> there, uh, uh, you're going to see the difference in how these actually go off because uh, th these are massive bombs. These are uh, probably like 250, 500 pound bombs. I'm not 100% sure uh, what they are essentially, but we'll see. Uh, the Russian Federation is routinely using this type of bomb to destroy our towns and villages. If you go to the town of uh, Boryanka, you can see a section of a nine-story residential block. Yeah, you might have seen this before. You might have seen this before. Uh, destroyed with this type of bomb. Uh, putting the key here, arm it, and push the button. You have to leave the camera about 500 meters from the, uh, from the bomb that's going to be destroyed. Yeah, I, I when I did that uh, story on the EOD, because I've done this a couple of times. I've been out to, it's fun. Uh, doing the story on, a e, couple of stories on EOD, I was like, how close can I get? And they were like, where we are? And I was like, where's that? And they're like, 
back the fuck there where you came in. <laughs> I was just like, oh, shit. You know, <laughs> after we got all the shots, it was like, all right, well, we have to go to all the way at the ass end. But uh, while we move further away from distance, okay. So it won't fall over during the explosion. Either right, whatever. So you can see while it might have been a big mushroom cloud, there was uh, just a bunch of dirt that got flung up. It was it's probably just gonna be be a decent crater. And these are massive bombs still. Don't worry. We're finding a lot of ammunition, he says. The head of the mine sweeping group says they're we're, they're finding over a hundred pieces every day. That's a lot. There are four units operating in this area. So hundred pieces a day. Imagine if like even if twenty percent of those can't even be touched or moved, you have to mark them and guard them. So that takes uh, that takes a lot of resources. Um, and if the other eighty percent are like you know, uh, different <laughs> categories of questionable or just can't be moved or, or for one reason or another or on a timeline, then still you need personnel like this guy. This guy's uh, probably infantry and he's just guarding, uh, guarding the area. He's got, I don't know what weapon he has. I don't know what buttstock that is. Uh, not, all, not all of them not all of them are with the 112th brigade some are some belong to other brigades uh, oh no uh oh I'm sorry, folks. Uh... Well, <laughs> we uh, we made it, folks. <laughs> Hang on one second. Um, Fuck is correct. Uh, thank you so much, Miss Rain Seattle. I, I, oopsie. I honestly can't thank you enough. Uh, I, like I'm not afraid to. I'm not afraid to eat the Cobes meal and everything. But this is this is you've done so much, and that's just so you've been so generous. Um, I can't. I uh, like. I I can. Thank you. <laughs> so, guys, we reached the thousand dollars. We did it. Miss Rain Seattle knocked it out of the park. So, not only do we have at least three, we have at least three thousand dollars going to Ukraine by by the first of the month. $3,000 officially going to Ukraine by the thirst first of the month. Thank you so much. I can't, I'm like, I'm like in awe. I'm like shook. I'm also really scared kind of to eat the meal. <sighs> oh my God. Thank you. Everybody, please hearts in the chat. Uh, um, when this uh when this is over um i will <laughs> i will absolutely put out a community post um and let everybody know <laughs> thank you so much uh this is a true story after i made uh, the first donation i won 5k i would donate more but i'm paying for my 
no, to us, of course, spend the money on yourselves. I had, I actually had braces when I was younger. My mom always uh, bitches at me. She's like, you didn't wear your retainer. Your teeth are all messed up. Yeah. Facts. Um, but <clears throat> I can't, thank you so much. You are the, uh, you have been more than generous and you are, I, I know your grandson is absolutely going to hate the braces day in and day out. And they're going to be painful, but you know what? He's going to like them in the long run because, Hey, <laughs> look what happened to me. I guess, uh, some people might, uh, some people like the, the chops. <laughs> thank you so much. I, I can't, I can't, I, I can't thank you enough. I will, um, uh, as soon as this, uh, as soon as we're done here, I will make a community post um, thanking you and letting everyone know that we have reached it. Uh, and don't forget to subtract three eggs. We're at minus three eggs. <laughs> I thought we were only at minus one. So, <laughs> so we have to get a full fourteen hundred dollars more until somebody gets us a it gets us to eat a beer egg. Uh-oh, because we do have the Mountain Dew eggs and the Spam cookies that we're going to eat. Thank you so much, Miss Rain Seattle. Miss Rain Seattle is amazing. <laughs> I, I like I'm I'm actually like kind of in awe at the fact that we were able to like I, it, this was able to get organized and done within just 30 days. Uh, it was hell. It was mostly done at the beginning and it was just you guys have just finished it out with just like, it, it, oh yeah, just, let's just do this. It it makes me feel, it makes me feel really close to uh, to everyone, and that I, that's a really good feeling, like a big old hug. <laughs> you guys are fucking great. I love you guys so much, and I can't wait. I can't wait to let everyone know. <laughs> we will. Uh, Oh, this is going to be amazing. So the charity is not over though. The charity is not over just because we reached the $1,000 mark. We reached the $1,000 mark. However, we still got to get to that 1400 so we can eat some beer eggs. One and two. <laughs> Are you kidding? Really? <laughs> <laughs> For real? <laughs> I was gonna say, let me know. Don't <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> uh okay. I I need to get the instructions for the spam cookies to you next week. Yes, you do. Nah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Oh, okay. Is it, oh the eggs. I forgot about this. Oh, okay, subtract the three eggs. All right. So still, let's get to that. Let's get to the fifteen hundred dollar mark. I think we can all do it. Um, again, myself and Mango are going to match ten percent as well. So this is going to be fucking amazing, guys. Guys, this is going to be amazing. And don't forget this uh, this Saturday, uh, we're gonna have the uh, you know late night stream nostalgia blowout with uh, you know with the charity, and we're gonna see how much we can raise so that we can. Um, Get as much money over to uh, the Ukrainian people as possible. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are the fucking best. I can't. I can't. I. I don't know. I don't know what I could. What else I could ask for? I don't need to ask for anything for Christmas for years. This is the best thing I could have ever asked for. Um, you guys are the greatest. Um, Mango. Get with me because uh, I have to make a slideshow of the people who donated. Um, I'm going to black out all of their information and I just need to send it to you for a video edit. <laughs> that's basically it. Um, I'm the only one that's going to get anybody's information 100%. Please black it out if, uh, if you do send donations. And the charity is still open until Saturday at midnight. Thank you guys so much. That's enough of me uh, bloviating. <laughs> Только вот по этому житомирскому направлению удалось разминировать около 30% всей территории, а здесь еще и другие. Uh, there are lots of areas that remain. There's Passover, and then there will uh, be holidays in May. 
Впереди в Украине Пасха и знаменитые майские праздники, поэтому саперы... But the sappers are asking civilians not to picnic in the woods because the party may end like this. Празднования, говорят, может закончиться. Yeah, so there are still civilians, people who are just like, fuck this, I want to go out. You, we've seen this during the pandemic. Uh, people who are just like, fuck this, I want to go out, even if there's an explosive in the ground. You could step on a 155 shell, and this is what's going to happen. Like, not necessarily this. This is the crater that um, those uh, those shells were in. Those bombs, likely that's what that what he's walking up on. And as you can see, it was blown out quite a bit. Uh, but there's a lot of material that sunk in to this, uh, to this crater as well. So yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Oh, this is going to be fucking amazing. This is going to be one hell of a meal. My, my neighbors are going to fucking hate me. <laughs> All right. So again, this is, uh, radio free europe radio, uh, radio liberty and it is funded in whole or in part by the american government please take that as uh as you would um take all the information with that grain of salt all righty folks so we got a little bit of combat footage we're gonna gonna look at it uh, a lot of it's real quick um one of these two guns did send to me i already had it saved before you sent to me but i always appreciate it um if you're in the discord Go ahead and uh, hit the uh, Ukraine channel and send me uh, any videos you might find interesting, whether they are um, graphic or not. Um, well, if they are graphic, uh, DM me the link. If they are not graphic, um, please put them in there. Uh, but let's check this out. This is quite wild. Uh, I saw this one earlier, and it's, it's a little hard to see, but Sarahcraft is legit just spinning out of the sky is just falling out of the sky and what seems to have happened is i don't know if it was hit if it was uh or if it maybe stalled out but it's seems to be just like inoperable and it's falling down and the only thing that it's hitting is the atmosphere so it's it's doing this number uh the pilot could be dead or unconscious um uh, uh, you never know. So, let's see it one more time. Yeah, it's just spinning there. <laughs> Falls down. And this is kind of the same concept you would use to uh, land uh, a helicopter. I don't know. Somebody can tell me what the term is. But uh, if a helicopter stalls in the air... As long as the propellers aren't like iced over or something, uh, you can actually like land the helicopter safely because as it moves through the atmosphere, since it's a rotary wing aircraft, it'll actually spin uh, the air going up will actually spin the uh, the rotors so you can make a soft landing and allow you to uh, fly the helicopter. Uh, if anybody wants to tell me what that term is, please, please do. Uh, hit that like button, like button, folks. All right. So this is the one that Two Guns sent me. It is four Russian tanks destroyed by a single Ukrainian missile missile ops. Let's check it out, folks. And these are the uh, these are ATGM. So these are going to be probably on a tripod or on some kind of fighting uh, auto rotation. Yes, thank you, Puffalopagus. Auto rotation. So long story short, it's uh the atmosphere hits the rotary wing it causes it causes it to spin slows down the aircraft and kind of acts like a, a parachute you're not gonna be able to fly it for very far but you can uh at least land it safely and get your ass out of there um oh shit why is that in arabic that's wild uh a lot of these uh might have been given to uh rebels or proxy uh military in syria uh, initially and been designed for that also there are chechen warriors and uh like uh muslims in the area that might speak arabic as well so um if the if uh you're wondering why there might be Ar arabic numerals on there it's probably be because of one of those two reasons these were meant to go to somebody else uh and got rerouted or 
um, like the uh, the local population, you know, speaks that language. Anyway, uh, you fly the helicopter like it's a gyrocopter. Yeah, so kind of gyrocopter like uh, like one of those things that falls off of the tree. Essentially, just boop, 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 boop. So again, keep in mind that these are tanks. Tanks need drivers and operators. It's definitely on a tripod type ATGM. Obviously, you can tell because it's it got a separate computer. Let's see if it comes in on the. Yes. Came in on the top, right? Got him. It looks like it hit the uh, fuel. So the uh, Russian tanks uh, oftentimes have like a big ass fuel ex like external fuel tank on the back, and I think that's what we just saw explode. Uh, Helicopters are fucking awesome. I don't know what you're talking about. I love helicopters. They're also really fun to fly in. Unless the pilot's a dick. So we have one. Got another. She's aiming up. What it looks like he's trying to do is, let's see, let's see him hit this one. Okay. It's odd. All right. So he hit this one uh, basically head on. So I'm wondering, uh, maybe it's. Uh, Maybe it has to do with the position that they're in. So I'm just wondering why he's aiming it up. So he's probably aiming it up because of the position that they're in. If he aims it down too low, um, because this is a fly by wire missile. Um, I don't know if it's actually fly by wire. It might be a uh, radio communication that it, he can actually control. Uh, they can actually control it. Um, but I, I mean, it's the same thing as like, you know, if you're, looking through your scope, but your, uh, the muzzle of your rifle is, you know, pointed at a tree, you're going to shoot the tree and going to shoot whatever, whatever your, uh, uh, sights look at. Um, so I think that's, that's my own, my speculation as to why they're like firing it up. So it's like going up and I thought they were just like firing it up. So they got a little bit more altitude and they could actually just drop it down. But that doesn't seem to be the, be the case in this one, but they hit the other one from the top a little bit. So I don't know. We'll see. We got two more that we can hit. I am a crazy person. Um, hey, if it wasn't for helicopters work on high voltage, high voltage power lines, uh, uh, would require them to shut the grid down. No bueno if there's a hospital on that grid or people. That would be the most inconvenient thing for anybody ever. I thought there was one over here. Yeah, they got to be in like a lower position. Jeez, dude. Oh, they're reloading. I was wondering why it was like jumping around and everything. Um, I'm just scared of everything I w I'm watching. That's okay. If you if you need a dip, by all means, dip. Nobody's gonna say anything um, at all. So I was wondering why I was jumping around and he wasn't moving. It's because they were reloading 
the uh, the Rockets. So the the so we got one more over here. So he's aiming up over the target, so he can fire out. Boom. Is he gonna fire? There he goes. And it looks like it's about to be Yeah. So that one that one actually, if you look back a little bit when it hits this little outgassing here, that's all the pressure on the inside being forced out. Keep that in mind. Um, uh, just keep that in mind um, because that's essentially the, the purpose of this. When these, uh, when these rounds go into a target, they either... Um, penetrate in and they they'll increase the pressure inside uh, typically um, and what that'll do if the pressure has to get out if the breach is closed uh, on the uh, on the cannon uh, the pressure won't be able to escape through the cannon and it will have to escape through somewhere and that's uh, where we got like the jack in the box effect with the turret popping off of tanks and things like that and this one it seems to have just burst out through the through the underside of the turret, maybe not enough to uh, pop it off. Um, usually, usually that that comes with hitting the uh, ammunition, but I'm not 100% sure on what the hell this was. Uh, it looks m closer to like a uh, like a BMP as opposed to uh, an actual tank because just because of the way it was hit and the way it didn't like pop off that smaller BMP um, turret, uh, it's going to have smaller ammunition, so it's not going to just go boom all the time, especially especially if they're low as well. Uh, the way you talk about everything is so cool slash disturbing. <laughs> cool and disturbing. Uh, yeah, well, I appreciate it, I guess. So that's actually pretty astounding. Four, four in four, four and four. As to whether or not uh, that was actually like that was actually four tanks, or if those were, you know, if this is propaganda, it could always be propaganda. Uh, it's it's still pretty astounding. Those look like fresh tanks, so or fresh vehicles. So it's uh, uh, I don't know. It's up to you to decide. Uh, science i know i'm not a professional no, no no i just i'm not not even close like i am just i just know things about war <laughs> that's it all right um so i found this this is just a a battle that happens uh, this is a drone flying over obviously and it looks like well, there's a few uh, BMPs, the armored fighting vehicles. Several of them uh, obviously got hit. Probably by, uh, well, it looks like they got hit by artillery. Because if, the, if you were to javelin attack these or uh, airstrike them, there would, be, there would be a lot more strafing damage. And it seems like there's... Seems like these were hit uh, with artillery, be just because of the the craters and the destruction. I mean, this this building was clearly hit by a shell, and one half of it was blown out. So yeah, alrighty, alright. Oh, that's just a busted up vehicle. Oops. All right. Uh, all righty. So we got uh, two more real quick. We're just going to take a look at this 
this little video right here from the sun. Uh, this is from the sun. And we're going to check out the scale of the true scale of Putin's tank graveyard uh, revealed as Russia's losses mount, mount up. So we're going to check this out. And there's a. Uh, team who are operating in a secret base near sorry about that so we managed short. to meet a ukrainian drone team who are operating in a secret base near the ukraine russian border flying a leleka drone over russian soil now they do this every day to look for the positions that the russians might be we actually watched this video on uh on here as well uh so if that came from them that's pretty fucking cool using to shell Ukraine. But on one of these missions, they discovered what they said was a Russian tank graveyard. Hitting the nail on the head again, Puffleupagus. Imagine what would happen if the inside of inside wall of the tank was turned to buckshot and bounced around inside willy-nilly. Yeah, all, all that steel, plus all of the copper, plus all of the heat, because that copper turns into a liquid jet and it punctures the, the armor and bounces around itself. So the footage they showed us appeared to underline what we've already heard about Putin's devastating battlefield losses in this fight for Ukraine. Yeah, this is and this is nothing compared to what they've actually lost. So one sec, folks. So it's a little warm in here. Um, this is a, nothing compared to what, what they've actually lost, um, so far in the war. Um, I do have, uh, I did have, I think, um, it was an update on the amount of losses they had in the last 24 hours. I do not have it here. But I think it was it was something like nine tanks, um, lots and lots, lots and lots of uh, material uh, and personnel as well. Uh, so yeah, the the Russians are still not doing good. This war again, a conventional war, is going on. Oops, it's going to continue to go on, and it's going to continue to get worse. And speaking of worse, this is where the stream is about to get a whole hell of a lot worse, guys. Um, thank you again to uh, Miss Rain Seattle and everybody else that has donated. Everybody that's been so generous. Everybody that's here, that's lurking, that's in the chat. Thank you all for being here. Um, thank you for sharing this around as well. Thank you for helping me learn. Um, but we have to uh, we have to talk about other things, and we've talked about the the cost before. So get ready, we're going to talk about the cost of war. Uh, real quick, we're going to check this out now. I don't I don't uh, endorse subscribing to Happy Chip, uh, mainly because I don't I don't know anything about them. Uh, all I know is that they've really jumped on the uh, Ukraine war thing because YouTube has really, really lowered the uh, restrictions on like what they're going, what they're willing to, uh, wh what they're willing to let go. So, and you're going to see that. So yeah, uh, if you're in the discord, check that out. You're going to see some dead folks here in a little bit. Um, what this says is, oh. Uh, uh, what are all cheerful, uh, quote unquote. These are the wives and mothers of soldiers from the so-called LDNR. They received 10,000 rubles, each for the death of their heroes. Well, a photo of the report apparently uh, was a prerequisite for receiving such a large amount of assistance. Um, 10,000 rubles is about $300. And all of these, all of these women, because they lost their wife or their, excuse me, their husband or their son, they got 
three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks because the inside of a tank was turned into buckshot and bounced around willy nilly, uh, while their son was inside of it, or their husband, or their brother. This is uh, this is kind of part of sanctions one because well we devastated the the Russian economy and two because well Putin fucked this entire operation and uh, is is not it's not looking so good for him on uh, any front other than just splitting the country in two and we'll see what happens because his health is deteriorating he is an older man he's gonna eventually keel over at some point um i'm not going to speculate that he's like uh super super dead you know or super bad and just like he's about to keel over any second um but like he's he's an older man he needs but uh, extra care but he also has to maintain the image of vladimir putin um a little happiness i shared this i shared something similar to this and it's just a someone took the ass end of a russian bomb or a missile and made a couple of logs and oh, let's have some soups on right what can i say um was left a Russian Orlin 10 reconnaissance drone, uh, which was recently shot, bound, shot down by the 60th uh, Separate Infantry Brigade of Ukraine in Kherson Oblast. So he's holding it out. These things are super fucking light. That's that's wild. Um, and these reconnaissance drones are what we've a, a lot of what we've been seeing. Uh, some of the are, are some of the footage we've been seeing. A lot of what we've been seeing is actually. Uh, commercial drones it's it's amazing like commercial drones from the uh, ukrainian side because we've mostly been watching the ukrainian side um from the russians the stuff that we see would be from a lot of this uh or actually correction wouldn't be from a lot of this uh it would be from again those <laughs> those uh commercial drones these are for them to find some targets the only reason you would see footage from this is there uh it was picked up and someone was just like okay i'm gonna upload this to the internet this is a this is a military drone that's like classified and shouldn't have been shot out of the sky but was pretty fucking sweet is that lady on the right okay which one i don't know Um, anyway, so all right, so we have some Russian losses at uh Papans Papazna front line west of Luhansk. So, uh, I'm not sure what happened if it was uh an artillery strike or what exactly happens here but we do have some entrenched soldiers and we'll go back we'll go back through uh these soldiers were in a fighting position it looks like a couple of squads worth of soldiers essentially uh a squad being about a 12 uh 12 man element um so yeah around a, a squad plus um not quite like a possibly like a platoon size element but i would say about half of that and uh it looks like they got hit by some kind of artillery it looks like they might have been hit by um uh aircraft because there are uh, a lot of large strikes around here, but there's also a lot of smaller, possibly from uh, from a, a cannon uh, hitting the ground. And these uh, unfortunate soldiers have been 
torn apart. Um, and uh, left there, unfortunately. Because, well, hey, uh, you can't always, they can't always pick them up uh, in the uh, in the immediate. Plus, hey, this is the cost of war. These soldiers died, and they died fighting, and they died in this way. And that's the weapons that we use, and this is the war that we that's being fought. So, if that's a, a if there's any misunderstanding about that, then I don't really know how to help you. But um, yeah, we'll continue. We've got a uh, now. This was um, in Kharkiv. Russian soldiers hide inside a house, camouflage their Tiger M uh, with a corrugated iron roof, and the end. So. The Tiger M is like an M ramp. It's a gigantic uh, vehicle. Um, good point. America spends millions on on a single camera for their drones. Russia sticks a Canon EOS with theirs uh, on theirs with the, some Velcro. Yeah. In Soviet Russia, drone flies you. Um, All right, I'm getting tired. I want to go to bed. And uh, BGTV is about to start with, with some of his thing, his themes. All right. So uh, the Tiger M came out, and this was this was going to be their probably going to be like their living quarters and everything like that. Um, not likely their main like their main fighting position because you wouldn't put your vehicle right next to the, like the main fighting position. I don't think like, and they covered it with corrugated steel to try and hide it. And they did a really bad fucking job of doing it. They look like they were drunk trying to fucking put this shit on there. Uh, hashtag Russians. And like, I looks like they took a piece off of the top of the roof because they ran out. Um, but yeah, Looks like they got found, and their fighting position that they built was annihilated. Uh, I don't know what it was hit with, but it's no long, no longer there. Uh, so yeah, they they are not doing a very good job of hiding uh, from four K. I guess. All right. This one, uh, let's see. I think there's, I think that's the last one. And then I have one last video for you guys and we'll get out of here. All right. So there, uh, I gotta read this for you guys. There are reports that a, a mine, a quote unquote mine was found, uh, planted on a, on a railway in one of the villages of r rural, uh, Bryansk oblast, we managed to identify the pictured mine, uh, quote unquote mine. This is in fact a Soviet SZ-6 demolition charge. And most interestingly, it is inert. Bottom line says, bleh. I don't know how to read that, pronounce that rather. Uh, so it is not dangerous at all. Uh, the real one, however, consists of five 5.9 kilograms of TNT, which is a lot. That is, that's 5.9. That's what like, uh, what was like? 14 pounds, 15 pounds of, of TNT should absolutely devastate anything that uh, sets it off. Uh, apparently, this is either a warning by their Ukrainian saboteurs or some someone's cruel joke. This is very unlikely to be a false flag attack since it couldn't do any damage, even in theory, but it, it fits UA mo uh, modus operandi inside Russian territory, targeting vital infrastructure used by the military. I don't know. This uh, this inert thing was probably put there to see how uh, what the reaction was because when we were trained against uh, IEDs, um, what the uh, what the insurgents would do is they would set up like fake IEDs and stuff like that to see how we would react uh, and uh, call it in and everything, and then they would do that multiple times. And they would do it with real IEDs 
and they would see how we reacted each time. And when they saw it was consistent, then they would make their battle plan and they would attack us by making us go out for, you know, a fake IED and turn the real IEDs on us and ambush. So this is, might be just the first step. Who knows? Could just be a, a fake uh, post by like some Russians just like, oh shit, look what they did, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, or something like that. So take it with a grain of salt, but that seems more like they, they were watching the tactics. There might have been people around actually uh, checking it out. So, all right, folks. Uh, our last video is not for the uh, faint of heart. So, those who want to stay, go ahead and stay. Now, what we've talked about quite a bit, uh, we were talking about uh, those ATGMs, those missiles that got hit. And when that BMP... And I'll uh, see if I can uh, hang on. Mm -hmm. BMP. No, there it is. Uh, we'll not go with the. There we go. There we go. All right. BMP. So. These uh, fighting vehicles that you've seen a, a whole hell of a lot of here in, uh, like in the war in Ukraine, um, they they have uh, different cannons. They have a, a lower profile um, because it's a armored personnel carrier. There's there's up to I think six or seven soldiers in the back plus a crew uh, that drives and operates the gun and everything. And this is meant to get soldiers close to the front lines, and give them uh, a uh, the ability to uh, defend or a uh, defense or um, uh, what am I saying? Like crew serve weapons and everything to keep the enemy's head down and uh, uh, provide a, a larger gun as well to take out larger positions. So, what the javelins have been doing is taking advantage of every tank's weakness, which is the soft top of this armor. And what happens like we talked about is this javelin comes down it blows the thing uh, uh, blows into it and it creates that massive amount of pressure well, when the when that happens and the uh ammunition or the fuel uh especially the ammunition is struck it ends up um uh, especially on a, a larger gun like this it ends up uh causing it to blow up more uh get blown apart as we've seen the machines always like uh, there's always some remnant of the uh, machine. Anytime a bomb goes off, this is why it's like never effective to you know uh, if you ever watch like forensic files or anything. The when everybody like whenever somebody like sets off a bomb, it's just like oh well, there's just well this wealth of information because the bomb doesn't always destroy everything. I'll let that hang in the air for a little bit. All right. It's a very short video. I'm going to turn off the uh, the music for it. Because... So we've got our, our BMP. Absolutely annihilated. Uh, looks like we've got flares up here. This is a small, much smaller machine gun on this. Uh, on this vehicle, and it looks like it was a wheeled vehicle as well, because because of what was uh, what's around the uh, tires burnt here. So it's been blown apart. Is the wide open? All the doors open, and uh, well. Our crew is available in the forest here. I 
all over the place. So, um, I'm not going to play that again simply because pretty fucked up. Uh, I'll put the link in the, in the chat for those that want to go and examine it again. Um, but this is uh, more of the cost of war, more of the reality of war is these men were blown out of this of this vehicle and tossed around. I know I said I wasn't going to play it again, but uh, we're tossed around the battlefield. And this is the reality for every single one of these tanks that's been hit. Now you can imagine that plus the plus these bombs plus shells just landing in civilians these people were protected they were protected in armor so you can only imagine what the uh unprotected population the more vulnerable populations would look like and that's something that the uh the people that are left alive have to deal with they're the ones that are going to have to pick up the uh the, the pieces. Um, Russia's armored equipment was uh, all designed for a Cold War shutdown with NATO in lump Eastern Europe, hence the low pancake with the Yeah, I saw that fucking video too. <laughs> I thought I had saved it, but I didn't. So, um, yeah. So, that's what's happening, folks. And whether what is whether your politics go one way one way or the other just remember that there are always there are always soldiers on the ground there are always soldiers that are fighting and those soldiers are people they're human they're human beings and whether or not they fully agree with the the reason that they're there a lot of the, most of the time they have to be there they may be shot if they're if they try to desert it's Russia. It's Russia. There have been a lot of reports of you know soldiers being you know shot or left to left to die, or deserters being sent to a gulag in Siberia and shit like that. I wouldn't want that for anyone. And um, the the important thing for everybody to take away is that there are civilians. There are a lot of people that are suffering and this is just one war that's actually going on this one happens to be happens to be the one that's kind of the tipping point for world war three because uh because of putin and his uh nuclear troops that with the satan two missiles but we'll get into that in a different in another stream um but not only that but we have to think about the people that are involved of their not of their own volition and that's a whole hell of a lot of whole hell of a lot of the reason why i uh why myself and mango did this charity is to help those people because one day you never know that could be you you never know when you could be even if you're in a foreign country just palling around and you get stuck in a war or you're in, you're in your home country and you're you get stuck in a war you never know when you're going to need help and you might remember hey like uh you might have someone who remembers rather hey someone else helped me maybe i can send a bundle of food maybe i can send a fucking mre to some poor starving american because of the civil war so thank you to batman um, this is kind of cathartic for me. It's something I really like doing. Uh, I will update my information as I get more information. Uh, I will do my best uh, to try and keep these shorter. I didn't mean to go this long. But I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank everybody who uh, who showed up, everybody that shared this round. Um, I have one little tiny palate cleanser for everyone. Um, and... Uh, again, thank you, thank you so much to Miss Rain Seattle for getting us to the thousand dollars, and to everybody that's donated, everybody that's just uh, been here and helped out. I can't thank you enough. This is amazing, and we have a 
at the very least, uh, at the very least, three thousand dollars going to Ukraine, and I can't imagine. Like, I can't. I could never have imagined that. I never could have imagined that kind of generosity. But thank you so much for for being here, folks. Um, I uh, don't really remember where I put that video, but uh, oh, I know where it is. Is it? That's not it. Oh man. Uh. Oh, I, I had a video, but um, I unfortunately lost it. Give me one second. Because uh, I wanted to... Okay. Uh, 4K video down. Open. There it is. All right. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, Sparky. All right. So, <laughs> I want to thank everybody for being here. 100%. Um, everybody that donated. Uh, everybody that uh, uh, it participates. And everybody that's just here to, to lurk and uh, correct me. I would absolutely love any kind of corrections. Um, Puffalopagus says, a human life is a human life. All those dead soldiers mattered to someone 100%. They mattered more than $330 fucking dollars. Yeah. My, my life insurance when I was in the army was $400,000. Or $450,000, something like that. A lot of money. Doesn't, doesn't, you know... Put me back into one piece after a fucking a 155 shell goes off under my ass. But hey. Such is war. Such is life. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Check out this quick little message to all of the Russian soldiers that, uh, well. Keep fighting, I guess. I don't know. All the Russian soldiers from the Ukrainians. How about that? That works out a little bit better. Thank you guys again. Peace out. Who you want, Ukraine?